it's it's my my stance that when we begin a, a ceremony like this, we open in a word of prayer and we ask and invite God to be here with us. Um, but I also want to just recognize that the matron of honor is here. She's just not up here, and it's good to have Whitney here. And uh, we wanted to make sure we honored her presence. Um, though she's not up front, she is here with us. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. Uh, we've come, there's such a high level of anticipation for this moment. And so we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and be here with us. Uh, may everything we say and do, may it honor and glorify you. We commit this ceremony to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We are gathered together here today in the presence of God and in this beautiful setting before this group of people to join them together in holy matrimony. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Honey, we already agreed. <laughs> Her mother and I. Okay. <laughs> the Bible reminds us of the importance and value that is in the relationship that is shared between a man and a woman. None other of God's creations has the opportunity to bring fulfillment and glory to God but that of a union of a man and a woman. The scripture says the man named the cattle named the birds of the air, named the wild animals, but he didn't find a suitable companion. God put the man into a deep sleep, and as he slept, he removed one of the ribs and replaced it with flesh. God then used the rib that he had taken from the man to make woman and presented her to the man. The man said, finally, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, name her woman, for she was made from man. In creation, Adam was formed first, and then Eve. It was so that the woman might be for the man, as the church is also for Christ. God was intentional about the creation of woman. Even the fact that Eve was created from out of the rib of Adam has significance. Not from his feet to be dominated by him, but from out of his side for his protection and from near his heart to know his love. Jeremy, do you take this woman standing by your side to be your wedded wife? to live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of matrimony. Do you promise today to love, honor, comfort, and keep her, forsaking all others and keeping yourself only unto her for as long as you both shall live? If this is your purpose, please answer, I do. I do. Lauren, <laughs> do you take this man standing by your side to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holiest state of matrimony? Do you promise to love, honor, comfort, and keep him, forsaking all others, and keeping yourself only unto him for as long as you both shall live. This is a very exciting day. No one could have written a better story about a romance between two people than the one that began many years ago between the two of you. Jeremy and Lauren, just considering the amount of time and the relationship that you have established with each other stirs tremendous emotion and brings vivid reflection for each of us, and especially, I know, for the two of you. And at the center of this love story is the one person who's most interested, most invested, and most excited about today. He's the one who has shown you the greatest love and attention, and who both of you would agree is why we are here celebrating with you now. His name is Jesus Christ, and it's because of the relationship that each, you each share with him as your Lord and Savior that brings such a celebration and such anticipation for tonight. So why don't you hand off those flowers? You can hang on to that. <laughs> go ahead, you can hold your hands even, that's okay. There you go. As both of you speak your vows to one another, may I remind you what God's Word says in regards to making a promise or a vow. Scripture tells us when a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath to obligate himself by a pledge, he must not break his word but must do everything he said. So with that, look at your beautiful bride, Jeremy, and repeat after me. I, Jeremy, take you, Lauren. I, Jeremy, take you, Lauren. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. I do promise and make this covenant. 
I do promise and make this covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. For richer and for poorer. For richer and for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For as long as we both shall live. I can do this. We all anticipate that you can. Mm -hmm. Repeat after me. I, Lauren, take you, Jeremy. I, Lauren, take you, Jeremy. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. I do promise and make this covenant. I do promise and make this covenant. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful wife. To be your loving and faithful wife. For richer and for poorer. And for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. What symbol do you have to give to one another that you will faithfully perform your vows? You have some rings? I do. You do. You, my friend, must get them for me. He's gonna give them to me. You're good. These are nice. Thanks. These are really nice. <laughs> they have such significance. Um, you know, I, I stop and I have the opportunity, we have a chance to pause and, and really for all of us consider the symbolism of wearing a wedding ring. And, um, you know, regardless of whether you're wearing the ring or not, it doesn't change the covenant that you're entering into before the Lord. I mean, this isn't just an agreement in the state of Washington between the two of you, but this most importantly is as if Jesus is right here with you, and he is. And you enter into covenant with him. And that unconditional love that he's exercised in your, to you by giving up his life, um, you now commit to one another in this act called covenant. They're not only generally, I would say they're somewhat expensive. You know, um, There's a great value placed on them monetarily, but the value that they symbolize is beyond what this world has ever could ever experience. And so they're going to get banged up a little bit. They're going to get dinged up. They're not going to be quite this beautiful maybe 50 years from now. But they're going to have the same amount of significance that they had even as of today. So as you place them each on their, each other's fingers and repeat what we're about to say, just remember the power, the communication, and the, how this promotes God's glory to the world around you. Okay? So with that being said, you're going to take hers. Go ahead and place it on her finger. John, look at your beautiful bride and repeat after me. Lauren, it is with all my love that I give you this ring as your husband for the rest of my life. I will live out the covenant that this ring symbolizes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Your turn. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat after me. Jeremy, it is with all my love. Jeremy, it was all my love. That I give you this ring. That I give you this ring. As your wife. As your wife. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I will live out the covenant. I will live out the covenant. That this ring symbolizes. That this ring symbolizes. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. So today, the two of you, it's, it's your desire to participate in a couple of activities, and one of them that has very great meaning within the covenant that the two of you have made today. You'll be symbolically planting a tree together. It's so cool. It's so cool. I love it. You're going to combine soils that have been taken from each of your family's properties. This is very significant because both of you today begin something brand new. Yet, as new as it is, the covenant of marriage and the beginning of your family it, it is a timeless component of the way we were created and how we were purposed. But the beauty of what you're about to do is the fact that the soils have such representation to where your new, this marriage, this new beginning, what it's rooted in. It's rooted in generations that have preceded you, legacies that have been established and that you'll continue on, I know, into the family that you begin today. 
Then you'll be receiving communion. And as you now begin your life together, this symbolic act reminds both of you and all of us of the intensity of love God has for mankind. We're to celebrate what Jesus Christ did on our behalf by dying for our sins. Jesus said himself we are to eat and remember this sacrifice until the day he returns. So as the special music is sung, you're going to do that, and we're going to then receive communion together. And we're going to sign a license, I think, too, so mm -hmm. we'll be ready for that. Okay. Yeah. received communion together, you've celebrated the greatest action of love that this world's ever known and will ever know, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to the world. And then you've planted a tree, which is such 
what a great idea, what a great way of symbolizing and, and having that tangible reminder of what starts today. And so this passage of scripture really does go along with it. So let me read it to you. It's, it's I believe the way the Lord gives us, he gives us this instruction on how we're to love each other and be as husband and wife. Paul writes this, wives submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleaning her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. This is a profound mystery. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Now that's a long passage of scripture. It's really short in terms of what God's telling you on how you're to live and how you're to love your husband. And there's a whole lot there that talks about how you're supposed to take care of her. And to me, it makes it pretty simple. We have to hear things twice as often as husbands. Yep. I think that's the way it works. I really do. The great thing about this passage is that one feeds the other. Your love and care for her and sacrificing for her creates this response in her that can only come from her towards you. It's this amount of love and respect and honoring that you need more than you need from anyone else outside of, outside of the Lord. And it'll come from her as you sacrifice for her. That's the commitment. That's what covenant is all about. Unconditional love for the other. It starts with you. Shall we pray for him? Pray a prayer of blessing. Let's do that. Father, thank you for the two that stand in front of me. We stand with friends and family. And God, we pray blessing on Jeremy and Lauren's lives, on their marriage, on their future, on the decades ahead where their love for one another will be a reflection to the world, a perfect example to the best of they can of your love for us and for them. Thank you for what you're going to do. Bless them, I pray, in every part of their lives as they take this journey together and start a new chapter of their lives as husband and wife. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, having heard you make these pledges and vows to each other, I do, by the authority conferred upon me by the Church of Jesus Christ and by the laws of this state, pronounce you husband and wife. Boy, you're just getting antsy, aren't you? <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, we know. No longer two, but now one. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let me get out of the way. Jeremy, you may kiss your bride. Just stand here for a while. Yeah. Well, you take your flowers back. You guys turn and face that way. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to all of you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Jeremy Cooper. Let's give him a hand. <laughs>